What an exciting video. Thank you to the young professionals for putting this event on so the people of Grand Island can learn more about our community. Thank you for recognizing the importance of having your city school district here today. Our boundaries are the city boundaries. We are your public school district. We are the largest school district in central Nebraska. We are the largest district outside of the Lincoln Omaha metro area and the sixth largest in the state of Nebraska. We are Grand Island's second largest employer, serving 27 locations and covering a total of just over 2 million square feet. Over the course of the last three years, we have graduated a total of 1,636 students. Two thirds of those students have went on to a two year or a four year college or university. There are many parts and pieces that make success happen. The 2014 bond issue is a fine example. So I report back to the community, the projects are complete. We were able to impact each level, being the high school, middle school, and elementary with this bond issue. All of GIPS would like to give thanks to the community of Grand Island for your investment in our students and for your trust in our district. You told us to finish the projects in five years and in five years, we did. In doing so, we set a new standard for state of the art learning environments. So thinking about setting new standards, Today, I would like to focus on three high profile district initiatives that are paramount for our future. The academies, gear up in early childhood education. First, let's talk about the academies of Grand Island Senior High. You have a handout with great information about the six academies and now 20 pathways. And there is no better way for me to describe the experience than through the stories of our students. You met a student at the start of my presentation, Isaac Fawcett. Let me tell you a little bit more about Isaac. Isaac has had a full Islander experience. He's a member of the Gish Marching Band, the Jazz Band, Show Choir, Theater, FBLA, lots of activities. He's also been able to take multiple college level classes while at Grand Island Senior High School through both CCC and UNK. He intends to continue to college after high school. He's also been an intern at Hornady Manufacturing IT Department. So Isaac has been able to have high school experience, college class experience, and real world work experience all while at Grand Island Senior High. The modern Islander student has traditional experiences and take part in activities. They also take part in high school and college or AP classes at the same time, earning college credit early, and they get real world work experiences, thanks to our many great partners in our community. I like to call it our new normal. I like for that to sit in. I go to schools all across the country. There are people that have to put their names in a lottery to get these type of experiences. There are people that have to sit out and spend the night overnight just to get in line and hope they get a chance. But you are making that happen for every student here in Grand Island. Let's talk more about college. Gish offers 39 college classes from three institutions, including a community college, our state college, who's here with us today, and a university. We also offer 14 AP classes. Each year, Gish hosts a college fair, allowing every student the chance to talk with campus representatives from more than 40 colleges and universities, bringing choices right here to our students. We also have every student take part in the ever popular John Baylor ACT prep course as a part of their junior year. On the career side, Grand Island Senior High School is helping our students explore future careers like never before. With exploration during the freshman seminar class, students are learning how they can personalize each of the 20 pathways. Students take part in job fairs, industry tours, guest speakers, and beyond exploration, 
students get the hands-on experience through internships, apprenticeships, earning certifications, of which we offer 30. We have 50 to 80 juniors each year earning their CNA licenses so that they can work in career settings while continuing their high school and college journey. Thank you so much to our businesses that have programs in place that are helping our students pay for college and fill jobs right here at home. I need to take the time to brag on your Class A high school, if I'm not already. Two academies, the Academy of Freshman Exploration and the Academy of Technical Sciences were named National Career Academy Coalition Model status. For the second year in a row, every ninth grader with us took a college visit to UNL. For the second year in a row, we had a student to score a perfect 36 on the ACT. And again, I'll mention Isaac, who also won the FBLA National Championship in the IT Help Desk Department. Now let's talk about the very exciting Gear Up grant. GIPS earned this grant in 2018. We became the first district in Nebraska to receive this prestigious federal grant with a total impact of more than $13 million for our community and our kids. The purpose of Gear Up is to give college access to more kids and give it to them sooner, starting in middle school. To that effect, we have used the money in many ways. A few examples include teacher professional development, classroom resources such as digital microscopes and robots, and parent experiences such as workshops and conferences where they learn how to better support students and be ready to send their kids to college. Much like we've taken freshman students to UNL, the Gear Up grant has also taken kids to college, again, middle school. 85 middle school students took a trip to UNK in the fall, 20 students went to UNL for engineering days for girls, and this semester, 80 students are going to Hastings College and 120 are going to Wayne State, all to learn about the different majors offered at these schools and what it takes to be a college student. The biggest success we've seen from Gear Up is students talking about college and their future more, both at school and at home. The impact is living up to its name gaining early awareness and readiness for undergraduate programs. Something that is very clear from Gear Up is our kids are worth investing in. We've always invested in our, in our kids, but now we have outsiders who are willing to invest in our kids, invest in our district, and invest in our city. The third area of focus, our future, if you will, is early childhood education. Why early childhood education? The return on investment for early childhood education is 12 to one. For every dollar invested in early childhood education, you can expect $12 back in the future. These students who have early childhood education are more likely to graduate from college, from high school, to go to college, to do what Mayor Steele talked about, increase that knowledge occupation opportunities. Early years are major years for brain development. The impact on children is well documented. Early childhood education can help all. However, in Grand Island, our need is greater than our current capacity. The coverage gap for us means that 695 children are not receiving needed service. This is not simply a need for GIPS. This is a need for all of Grand Island. We want our city to be the destination city for many years to come. Early childhood is one of the key areas of investment to realizing that vision. I already spoke about the academies, but I want you to look at your handout at the profile of a graduate. This informs every decision we make at the high school. Our experiences, our partnerships, our classes, our budgets, our staffing, our resources, and yes, our facilities. Our successes are tied to this. Well, now we have a profile of a preschool graduate to do the same thing for our future decisions on early childhood education experiences, partnerships, classes, budgets, staffing, resources, and yes, facilities. 
This will continue to be a focus for the Board of Education as we look to move it out of a temporary location for the Early Learning Center after more than 10, 12 years. Our academies are quickly becoming national models. It's our opportunity to learn from the best collaborations of minds in our community, to take that same concept to early childhood. Two years ago, we asked for investment in academies. And you know what really makes our model so special and impactful is our community. We are giving all kids a world-class experience. Now it's time to do the same for early childhood education. There are three strategic moves that are necessary for our future. Number one, we must partner to build a community-wide comprehensive plan so all children have access to high quality early childhood education, ensuring local providers are connected, supported, as we deliver on the profile of a preschool graduate. We must investigate innovative ways to provide modern state-of-the-art facilities with educational environments that stimulate age-appropriate play-based learning and explorations to meet our high standards. And number three, we must rethink our service models. All children must have access to high quality early childhood education experiences, regardless of their setting. Wherever their parents decide to send them, the choice is theirs, whether it's in home, center, or school base. All children must have access to high quality early childhood education experiences and also regardless of their income. That means children from high income, medium income, and low income, all kids need these experiences. Today is our day to identify the investments today that will pay off for us tomorrow. Thank you so much for recognizing the importance of having Grand Island Public Schools here with us today and the impact that we make on our community. I would like to thank the Board of Education members that are with me here today. Our Board of Education, they always impress upon us to leverage our partnerships and to exercise physical responsibility. So on behalf of the entire Grand Island Public Schools Board of Education, as well as our staff, we all look forward to working with each of you and partnering to in continue to increase the effectiveness of our shared power to help all of our students thrive. Because in the city of Grand Island, it's together we thrive. Great, I was hoping I'd get a question about early childhood education. Um, I, I think the three strategic moves that we talked about, uh, number one, uh, the partnering together. Uh, we will never be the only provider of early childhood education. And so what we want to do is to be able to partner with our uh, folks that have, even if they have a daycare or early childhood program uh, in their home, uh, church-based, any other center-based program, and help us to move forward the profile of the preschool uh, graduate. Right now we have an early childhood task force and we have many uh, folks from the community um, outside of Grand Island Public Schools that are partners with us. And so we're very proud of that. We have a new director, Amy Richard. She's here uh, with us. We're really uh, just locked arms with uh, the National League of Cities, uh, Communities for Kids, the Six Pit Program. And so I think just by everyone knowing right now that that's a priority when we talked about the return on investment, all the things that we talked about that we want our students to be prepared for college. The thing that we continue to emphasize is that it starts with early childhood education and it's going to have to be a collective effort so that we can reduce that gap number to ensure that all of our students receive high quality early childhood education. You know, I've had the opportunity uh, to be a part of the Buffett Early Childhood Workforce Commission uh, for the last three years. And one of the things that we want to do for early childhood education is to lift up the early childhood workforce as a priority profession. And since you asked, I mean, one of the ways that we can think about developing a strong workforce, because many of these folks that are working in early childhood education, especially outside the school district, uh, their wages are, are quite low. And so we need to figure out, and oftentimes they move in and out of the profession, and that is harmful towards having a solid education for students. 
um, is to work with our colleges and universities. Right now we have the STEP program uh, through Wayne State. We also have some dual credit through CCC as well uh, with our Education Law and Public Safety, our Academy of Education Law and Public Safety. There's an opportunity there. We already have students that are interested in the education pathway. And we also have an off-site location um, over at our Wyandotte Learning Center. And what an opportunity for a college or university to come in and house an early childhood center right there. We could create additional seats for students. We could be training up folks that already here love Grand Island, and they can help us with our workforce uh, as far as having high quality professionals in the early childhood area. So I've made the ask, and I hope someone will answer the call. If I talk about the career, the college folks say, you're not talking about college. If I talk about college, the career folks say, you're not talking about careers. I want to be clear, and I want all of us to leave here on the same page today. So if you take a look at this document right here, uh, where it talks about our aspirations for our students, our profile of a graduate, it's clear. We want our students to be college, career, and community ready. We're going to prepare them for their choice. So if you think about we also note that we have 30 industry certifications that are available. And, and it, maybe it takes a little bit more explanation sometimes when students are earning dual credit, they're earning these uh, opportunities through our colleges, it can still go towards a technical certification if they so choose. And if they decide they want to take it further to uh, a four-year degree, they have that option as well. That is our goal for our students to be college and career ready. I also want to point back uh, to the facts about our community. Um, there is room for growth uh, in terms of degree attainment, um, and there is so much research that's tied to degree attainment for our community. And whether it's a two-year, again, that's back to uh, the technical trades uh, as well, uh, or a four-year, we want our students to be college and career ready, and we are preparing them for both, and we honor all of our professions, and we have apprenticeships, uh, 14 of them uh, right now where we have students that are out in your uh, industries and they're learning those skills and uh, I just applaud uh, the companies, the businesses that are making those opportunities available for our students and also encouraging them continue to uh, hone their skill set. Okay, so when we talk about early childhood education, uh, we really talk about it from birth to third grade. So I just want to be clear. Um, and so Really, uh, our program, we start taking our students at three and four year olds. Uh, that brain development, we start talking about it from uh, birth to five year olds. And so there are just many levels of development. And that's why it's important for us to partner with our community providers uh, so that we understand how we can best support our students from birth beyond. Okay. Um, as far as the funding uh, mechanisms for it, we're always advocating uh, for more funding uh, from our state level. It's not fully funded uh, from the state. Uh, we get partial reimbursement uh, back for that. And so I, I think it's going to take a group of people in our community to come together to think about uh, different ways that we can expand access. Right now, in order for students to qualify to receive services through uh, what we currently offer, um, then that means that uh, they have been identified uh, for some form of special education services or as well as free or reduced lunch. And we also know that every parent, uh, regardless of their income, I talked about that, the high income, the middle income, they want high quality education opportunities too. And so what we've not uh, explored before is having um, some form of, you know, another pool of funding, whether or not we have a, a sliding scale or we have uh, some way that the community has come together. Uh, and Mayor Steele can talk about whether or not he want to raise taxes, and I'll leave that up to him. <laughs> um, but other ways because uh, we cannot ignore the return on investment. And I know it's hard to think about because it's like 15 years later, but if we want to change the numbers of what we're talking about for our city, we have to start with that investment. And I do think that it will, take, it, it will call for some commitment on behalf of our local community. Um, and so I look forward to, you know, convening with folks, and I do believe that we can put a plan in place to make it happen.